What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video we're going to be talking about groups and assemblies in Revit. So uh, this is one of those topics that I think it's really important because uh, groups and assemblies generally kind of the main idea is the same, they both group things together, uh, but uh, what they offer and the versatility of both of these is quite different. The effects that they make on the elements is vastly different, so I think it's really important to know how to differentiate between what each uh, one does, and then you can just figure out uh, which option you to use on your particular project on a particular set of elements. So that's the idea behind this video. I'm going to show you what both of them do and then you can figure out uh, which one you can use on your projects to improve uh, efficiency and workflow and also just to kind of uh, get uh, more, uh, more tools and options uh, out of private. Uh, now, before we get into that, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. It's going to be the first link just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. Uh, there you can check out all of my Revit courses. I have uh, over 120 hours of content and I'm adding more each month. Uh, but also there you can find my Revit templates, uh, some really high quality parametric Revit families. And also uh, I uh, quite recently added a plugin. So uh, that's something that you might be interested in. So please check it out. Uh, and before we jump into Revit, uh, there is one really important thing, and that is to make sure to like this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell icon, not only because that will help you not miss any of my future tutorials, but also it does make the alpaca happy, and that's why we're all here. Okay, so now without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And as you can see, here I am in Revit, and I have a single project here. Uh, we have have like a little uh, house with a, a little roof here in front of the entrance and then also here I have like a just a little room or a little house uh, whatever you want to classify this as. So to start this off, uh, let's first cover how to create both assemblies and groups. So I'm going to be using this for the assembly, not just this kind of the construction of the roof and then this is going to be used this whole room for the groups. So what I'm going to do here is just going to orbit around a little bit and uh, make a selection just like this. I'm going to hold the shift key and just deselect the walls. I don't want the walls here. There we go. Perfect. So I just want the construction and the roof. And also I don't need the door as well. Okay, so once we have selected the elements uh, to create the assembly, you just go here to the modify tab and then uh, on the create uh, panel, we have the create assembly tool. So you just click on create assembly. It's going to give you a little window that's going to say, okay, uh, type the name of this assembly and we can call this one the roof or small roof construction. Okay, and then uh, the naming category. So uh, it's going to take a look at what are the what are the elements that are included or what are the categories of elements included in the assembly and then according to that it's going to uh, try to pick out which category you want to use as the primary category of this assembly. So here it's offering either roofs or structural framing. I'm going to go with roofs for example for this one and then click OK and now we have an assembly and now if I click as you can see, this is now an assembly. In the properties, it's going to say an assembly and then we can actually add parameters to this. So we can uh, change the naming category, but also we can add an image, comments, marks, and also we can uh, add uh, phasing. Uh, also here we have some type of parameters which are just general parameters. So you have a new set of parameters for that entire assembly. So not for the individual elements but for the assembly itself. And also something that you'll see change is here in the project uh, browser if I scroll down you will see that here we have just this assemblies uh, set or node and this is only going to appear if you have assemblies in the project and you can expand that and now here we have the roofs 001 assembly that we have uh, created here. 
Uh, so uh, this is the kind of the, the assembly that we have uh, created. Also, you can edit that. You can disassemble it. You can edit the assembly by adding or removing elements. So if I cl click add and add this door, this door is now part of that assembly. Or if I go to remove, I can remove that door and then we're back to what we have. Okay, now let's go to groups. So for groups, it's pretty much the same story. You just make a selection of elements you want to group. You go to the create panel and then here you have the create group option. You click. Again, you get the prompt to say what's the room, name of this group and let's call it just room one. That's okay. Click okay. And there we go. Now this is a group. Again, you have the option to ungroup it or to edit group so again you can go here to edit and then you can add and remove elements pretty much the same story as the assembly and then i'm just going to finish out of that now for the groups once you create a group here in the project browser also you're going to have the groups node now in this case uh you have the option for detail groups and model groups now in this case we don't really have any detail groups so that's groups of detail elements uh, but we do have a model group which is this room one uh, model group. So that's basically how you uh, how you create a group. Uh, now, why would you use an assembly, and then why would you use a group? This is a common question, and it's an important question. Well, for assemblies, uh, I, I like to think as, at, uh, I like to think about assemblies or look at assemblies as a way of presenting uh, a part of a Revit project as kind of a certain uh, kind of separate segment or something that kind of b gets built separately uh, or something like that. So you're basically showing the assembly of a certain part of the building. In this case, this is just like the, uh, the construction of this little roof in front of the door. You want to have like a little extra overhang there and then you have to add a little bit of extra construction. So if you want to display that uh, kind of separately, you can. So you create an assembly and then what that allows you to do is to go here and to create views. So create views is a function of only assemblies. So groups don't really do this. And this allows you to create a set of uh, views or in addition, you can create a set of plans just for this part of your uh, of your project, just for these elements, just for this roof construction. So that basically means that uh, you can uh, view this as a small project inside of your regular project. So if I click here to create views, it's going to give you an option to set up the scale. Uh, it's set to 1 to 20 because this is viewed as more of kind of a detailed presentation of a certain part of the project. And then you can have a 3D view, you can have a plan view, you can have sections, you can have uh, elevations. So I'm just going to perhaps get rid of the bottom elevation and we have a parts list, the material takeoff, and so on, a uh, roof schedule, structural framing schedule, so because these are the categories included. And also you can create a sheet, so you can uh, create a sheet for this. Now in this case, I'm just going to uncheck the sheets and just leave the, the ones that are gonna left check on and click OK. And this is now generating views. So here it goes to plan detail. And you might be thinking, well, where are these views here in Revit? They're not kind of in a regular place in the project browser. So the views appear inside of the assembly. Now we can expand this roofs. And now here we can see all of the views. So if I open up the 3D view, you can see this is a 3D view of just of our assembly. And then you can add some annotation or something like that, some text just to define certain elements. You can go, we have the, the elevation here. We have this plan view, which is kind of useless in this case. We have, what is this? This is like another elevation view. Uh, now it's set to a uh, course level of detail. So you have to set it to find to see all of the elements, but that's basically what it does. It gives you uh, a set of plans for a certain uh, assembly inside of your project. So it's really powerful for uh, making perhaps uh, making additional kind of uh, smaller sheets or something like that for certain parts of the project. It's really powerful for that. Okay, going back here uh, and how, and let's now talk about groups. So groups are a little bit different. They don't allow you to create a set of views. They are more for grouping elements that are going to be either repeated or something like that. So for example, if you have a, a house and you have a set of floors, which are going to be same, 
for example, for apartment buildings, this is quite common, you can use groups because that then allows you to just create the set of elements once. So you create the layouts uh, or a layout of a certain floor plan once, and then you just copy that upwards. And any change then that you make to the original one applies to the other ones. So let me show you here. I'm just going to go to this uh, group here and then let's copy that. So you can copy groups just like this by using the regular copy tool. Or uh, in addition, you can go to the architecture tab. You can go here to model panel and you have model groups. And here you have the option to place model group. So you can just place a group that you already have just like this. So it kind of knows that we have this group and then you can place it. And also you can go here to the project browser, you can go to groups, room one, and then you can just drag it out and place it there. So there are multiple ways of creating a new instances of an existing group. And here you can see it's all room one. So all of these are considered room one. Now compare that to assemblies. So if I take this assembly and if I copy that, there we go. Now, if I go down to uh, assemblies, if I decide to uh, uh, make a change to uh, this uh, assembly here, it's uh, actually going to create a new assembly. So if I just go here, for example, to this assembly, go into edit assembly, and then if I decide to make a, uh, make a change here, so for example, make this shorter or something like that, remove coping, finish, now, edits caused a new assembly type to be created. So if I click OK, we can see that this is now one assembly. This is a second one. And here in assemblies, you can see that now we have two assemblies. Uh, now, to take a look at groups, for example, if I go here into edit group and make a change, like moving this window, see what the rest of these now do when I hit finish. You can see that that window now changed on all of these and we only have that one room here. So uh, you can make uh, infinite changes to these uh, groups and then just it will just apply to all instances of that group. It will not create new groups, unlike assemblies where when you make a change, that's now a completely different assembly. So usually assemblies are not used for repeating elements. Uh, because they can be really difficult because then they just create infinite <laughs> number of uh, elements. So for that, groups would be more ideal, and especially because then it, they allow you to make changes. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's that's quite powerful, that's quite cool, but what do you do in a situation where you just want to make change to one group instance without affecting the rest of them? So in some cases, for example, you want to Perhaps you want to join these together. Perhaps they are just hotel rooms that are kind of coming together or something like that. So how do I get rid of this window? Well, for or or this wall here. Well, for any group, you can come in, you can use the tab key. So you just tap the tab key and you can select an element. So any element of your group will have this little option here that says group member uh, and click the icon to exclude uh, this from the group. So if you click on this, it's just going to exclude that wall. Now, if you select it, it's still part of that. Uh, it's still part of that group. And if you want to restore it, you can always go here to restore or all excluded, and then it's going to get back there. But you can remove that in situations where you want to perhaps join this here. So if I go to my floor plan view like this, now I have removed this wall and now I can just come in here and perhaps connect this just like that. So even though these are the same group, uh, this one just doesn't have the doesn't have that wall, uh, but it's still part of the same group. We still have only one room one group here. And if I still make changes to this one, so edit group, move the door, perhaps let's move the door there and move the window here. Hit finish the change will apply to this group as well, as well as the rest of them. So it's uh, only going to affect this removed wall. It's only going to be uh, removed here. And it doesn't work only with walls. For example, let's say that you wanna uh, switch the position of the, uh, of the door and the window, or perhaps let's do that on this one, but you don't want to affect the rest of them. You just come in here, use the tab key, remove, remove, oops, there we go. And then you can simply create a new door, uh, create a new door and a new window. Place it, okay, let's use a bigger window. 
and place it there and there you go so again these are the same group but as you can see you can make some changes so it's really powerful in situations where you want to make perhaps slight adjustments to certain groups just because of their position in the model or what they're used for uh, and uh, you don't really affect the rest of the groups but you still uh, save that functionality when you need it so if i need to let's say that i have to make this larger i can move this wall to finish and the rest of the walls will move now obviously here this kind of got uh i got disconnected so i would have to fix that uh, but there you go it's a it's a simple fix so for example i can come to this one edit group and then extend this wall hit finish and then that would be kind of carried to the rest of the groups. So that's uh, another really powerful aspect of groups in Revit. Uh, and uh, another thing that I would like to show you is just what happens when you delete these. So let's say I want to delete the assemblies, so I would delete this one, and then for this one I'm not going to delete it, but I'm just going to disassemble it. Disassemble it. There we go. Cancel. Okay. Oh, oops. Yeah, uh, disassemble, and then you get this little warning that says uh, deleting this assembly will delete all of the associated views. So those views that we have created for this assembly, they would be deleted. And that's okay, so I'm just going to go here to uh, delete these uh, elements, so it's just going to delete the whole assembly, and now here in the project browser, you can see that that assembly has now been deleted. Uh, now, on the other hand, with rooms, if I go and if I delete all of these rooms, just like that, you can see that those have now disappeared. Uh, and here in the groups, we still have that group, room 1, and I can still bring it back. So just because I have deleted it doesn't mean that it's gone. Uh, now, one more thing about groups is this cool option where if I select a group, I can click here on the link, and that's going to convert this uh, group into a uh, linked file. So it's going to be a separate project that's been linked in. So you can convert your Revit groups into new Revit projects, which is also another powerful feature. Now, if you want to learn more about groups and assemblies, I have a whole uh, chapter in my uh, Autodesk Revit Intermediate to Advanced Level course. Uh, I have a whole chapter dedicated just to groups and assemblies, how they can be used in projects, and just exploring all of the powerful features that are included. So if you want to check that out, it's going to be linked in the description of this video. It's on my website, Balkan arctic.com and also i'm going to leave it in the cards above so make sure to check it out if you're interested in something like that so there you go that's pretty much kind of a quick overview of groups and assemblies inside of revit thank you for watching guys make sure to check out my website balkanarctic.com for more uh, revit courses uh, there i have over 120 hours of content uh, and i'm adding more each week make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.